What's going on, everybody? John out here with you, and it's a Wednesday, March 13, 2024. How is everybody doing out there today? So look, this is Octopath Traveler 2. It was released February 24th of last year. I know this game, I don't believe, is out on the Xbox yet. It will be releasing some point this year, but you can get it on PS4, PS5, and Windows after the initial game was on Switch. So I never played the initial game because I don't have a Nintendo Switch, but now I get a chance to review Octopath Traveler 2. It's been a while since I recorded did a review of a game i know it's an rpg it's a long one and i apologize because of that it takes a lot of time to beat these games and go ahead and give you a review of my thoughts and thankfully now the only other two games i have left over for christmas to do when i got them on sale is valkyrie elysium and uh, soul hackers too so thankfully i'm not that far behind final fantasy 7 rebirth is going to wait until the initial patch so i'm good with that so i could probably finish elysium by the time that's done so i don't have much of a backlog but still Octopath Traveler 2, direct sequel from the first one on Switch, and I really, really like this game. I clocked in probably about 115 hours total playthrough. I was just one trophy away from the Platinum. I'm sitting at about 99 point something as far as the map exploration. I don't know what the last portion is. I don't know why it's not unlocking. Otherwise, I'd have the Platinum. So I wanted to share my thoughts on it. So initially, when I looked at the graphics here for Square Enix, I immediately had some good vibes because I'm thinking about either... Uh, a la Chrono Trigger, or even for me initially being 10 years old on that side around the PlayStation release in uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, 1997 was when I picked up the PlayStation. This kind of gives me tactics vibes, and it also gives me turn base as far as having complete freedom of what you want to do, and that's what I really enjoyed it. So the graphics and everything else, they just look really good, really crystal clear and sharp, and it's uh, pretty good to look at. And in the gameplay, you have turn-based. You can have four characters out at one time for the most part, with the exception of a couple extra battles here, which I won't spoil. But you have your four characters, and you have mixes in job classes. That's what makes me think of tactics on that side, because you have your initial character. I chose Agnia, the dancer. She's got a pretty heartwarming story. But you can go dancer, uh, merchant, scholar, cleric, apothecary, kind of a warrior mix, hunter, uh, Pokemon style with a chat where you can capture different monsters and release them, release their tactics. Uh, lots of different mixes as far as your complete party. You can adjust them to your heart's content for the most part. Again, your main character throughout the story is going to be locked in until you finish all the side quests and side stories for all of your eight and then any other side quests besides are just tacked on with extra items and everything else that you would get like you would in an RPG. But within your eight characters, there is about one to, you know, through five chapters, four or five chapters for the eight characters, you complete those, and then you complete their storyline. When you complete all the eight character storylines, and you get to the epilogue portion of it, and toward the end, you can change your characters in and out. But for the most time, you will have four. So what I initially would do would be this. I would go ahead and take my initial character. Don't sweat on who you really pick because you're going to end up having all of them in your party anyway. As long as you play it right. You play the game the whole way through. It's going to take you over 100 hours for the most part. You just plan on doing everything. But take your initial character. Complete their chapter one. And then after that, start finding the other characters, completing their chapter one, and then move on. Chapter two with everybody, chapter three, and so on. Kind of do that all in order. Don't fall to what the trap is when people say, I got confused in the storylines because I mixed them with certain different chapters. I kind of just went chapter one, two, three, four, five sequentially if it went up that far for all these characters and got it done where nothing ever went out of place. This is a game, honestly, I thought I could have picked up Two weeks after the fact, let's say I was playing something that also jumped back into it and wouldn't miss a beat. So I never really understood that criticism, but that's kind of why I did it in order sequentially. So here's a deal that kind of sets this game apart, which I thought was pretty interesting. You have your eight characters, whether it's Agnea, Throne, Oswald, Temenos, so be it that they're all different job classes, which is different in itself, right? That's what you would have in a tactics game like that. But also, there's day and night cycles in this game. So let's say Agnia is the dancer. She can go ahead and entrance people to uh, give them items and you know allow them to be uh, wowed by her dancing and take their items depending on a certain level of coordination at night and during the day she can ha guide them along to have them be summonable members in the party during the day if i got thrown a i can steal items during the day or during the night cycle 
I can uh, take them out, ambush them, essentially make them fall asleep. So if they're guarding a spot that I want to get to and they're standing in front of the door, just have thrown a knock them out. You could have Oswald scrutinize, be able to get some information or mug them if they need to take items, or Casty kind of talk them out or soothe them and heal their pain because she's an apothecary. So each one of the characters has something different in town to be able to bring alongside the different skills that they have in battle. And again, what's cool is once you unlock other jobs and once you get a chance to get other characters, that will unlock their initial job of the first eight. Right? And then you'll have a few secret ones that you're also able to unlock as well. For the secret jobs, only one can be unlocked at one time. So only one person can be an arms master or arcanist or some of the other secret jobs. But once you get the eight characters, you can find little altars to get their special skills. Or you can find a little person to talk to that will give you, hey, I'll give you another job license so you can have two warriors on your team or two hunters. Pretty cool like that. So you get a chance to mix everybody else's skills. I think for the most part, especially in this game, if you want to do everything effectively, you are going to be leveling up eight different characters, four to a party. Again, the XP is just a little bit split by the time you get all four at once. I think you can maybe hoard up a little bit if you carry a couple less party members, but it will get a little more difficult. It's pretty straightforward. It tells you what level you're supposed to be at a certain portion on the map, and there's a lot to do. So like any JRPG, and this one it's kind of weird. You can't fly, but you do get a ship on that side, and it's a lot of fun. You'll be moving around. You'll be learning new skills. You'll be fighting bosses. You're getting different jobs. Uh, you're getting the storylines between eight characters. Maybe their initial chapters, I would say, within the one to five, maybe. Uh, this is really rough on that. Because, again, it's about 110 hours for me to complete everything. Again, 109 on the spot that I'm looking in. So 110 is a good assessment of where we're at. But maybe each initial chapter is, I don't know, let's say 12 to 14 hours for each character. And you kind of combine that up times eight, and then maybe a little bit of exploration as well, and uh, some extra things to find some extra gear that's really good and all that. I think that's a good, pretty much some nation of what you're going to have between all of these characters and the uh, gear that you find from doing some of the side quests. Let me say this about side quests really quickly. So when you get to each town, you're going to find some other characters with like an orange bubble across their heads. And you know that's a side quest after you get through a couple lines of dialogue. So it's not very clear about what you want to do with the side quests. But the side quests, if you look at it on a guide, only take about a minute or two each on that end. And they will give you some very good equipment. So the main thing for me is I would do this. I would get the chapters 1 through 5, if it goes that far, for the 8 characters, not worry about the side quests so much. Then when you get the 8 chapters done, I would do all the side quests, go to a guide, you can consult it, and get it done in about a minute or two. And very easily, I'll say this, because the side quests are short enough, the uh, hints and everything else are quite simple, really, when you think about it, because he said, I think I need a character to go to sleep. They're working too hard. Well, throw an A knocks them out, you know, certain things like that. There might be certain characters that you talk to that said that they need help. You do a quick travel over there because you already have everything unlocked on the map. It makes the side quest a heck of a lot easier and get them lickety split from a finger snap. So complete all the main chapters from your characters, then do all the side quests after that. It's not that long. If you probably, let's say, miss 25 to 30 of them, it might take you four or five hours to finish all that stuff, and the equipment that you get is really good. So here's some things. You get all the different jobs. You use all the different characters. Certain storylines are better than others on this side. Agnia is a very heartwarming dancer who wants to be a star. The Oswald story actually brought a little bit of tears to my eyes as long as that one. I would save Agnes and Oswald for the end, as far as the main stories before you get into the epilogue and everything else. Those are just my hints. Those were really good between Agni and Oswald. There were certain characters. I liked them all. There were certain stories I liked more than others, but I thought that this game hit very well. I know there were some people looking at some of the comments that I went through just before getting into this review saying, 
is Octopath Traveler 2 that much better than Octopath Traveler 1? 1 is probably a 7.5, 8, 2 is probably a 9. That's where they put it. Octopath Traveler, the initial on Switch, was already a very good game. This has taken some of the job classes, added more and more skills, a little bit uh, added it, added in storylines, kind of make them less monotonous through the chapters, and it did everything a sequel was supposed to do. It already took a really good game in the original and made it better in the second, and it gave people what they wanted. And I think a lot of people are going to want Octopath Traveler 3. I, I'm saying going through this right now initially and doing this review, I know the last game I told you, which I thought was one of the greatest games I ever played, was the Final Fantasy VII Remake. This Octopath Traveler 2 game definitely throws its own punches, and it holds its own. This is easily the best game that I played in 2023, and I'm giving the review in 2024 because I'm playing it now on that side of giving a review, but this was the best game released last year. And again, I know I didn't get a chance to give you the review of uh, Star Ocean 2 Remake, although I did beat it just after then did this game. Star Ocean 2 Remake, another game from Square Enix, so don't miss, that game was fantastic. But I think that this one is my favorite one of 2023. I absolutely love this game. Again, the graphical style is fantastic. I love the multiple job system, the multiple characters. Some storylines were hit and miss, but I also love the exploration. The music in this game is terrific. That's some of the best music that I've heard. When you get to, uh, like, Toto Haha in the uh, spot where you pick up Ochet and you get the ship... Uh, I love some of those tracks, and the day-night cycle, which was also a really nice touch in this game, changes the music tracks on the day and night side as well. I believe it is on Spotify, and if you do like video game soundtracks, or you already have a list, I kind of put some of that stuff together, not nearly as in-depth as the main music that I listen to. This would absolutely have some bangers on it that uh, should absolutely be mentioned, because you have... Fantastic gameplay, fantastic music, and a pretty good story, and everything in the end. Maybe this is a little bit of the end as far as uh, what you're seeing. This will change depending on each one of your characters. Kind of get to the same summation, but still, there is some repayability if you want it there. For me, however, finishing everything else in one go and getting about 115 hours... Besides that last part of the map that I can't find, there really isn't anything else that I want to go back and try to finish. It's been a complete effort all the way through before I gave you my thoughts. This is a game that you absolutely can't miss. And now at this point, when I got it on sale, we're on the Black Friday side of it being about 25 is an absolute steal. This is a slam dunk gold standard RPG that should not be missed. And I hope you appreciate this one and you play it because this is a gold standard classic. It's to not be missed and it was a great game. At least a 9 out of 10. See you guys.